How do you guys? Fancy seeing me here? Eh? Right, uh, university is a finished, as um, officially finished. Oh, pardon me. It's a bit fucking warm. Uh, which only leaves one thing, and that is moi, with a shit ton of time. Um, and that time I'm going to dedicate to my channel. So, without further ado, let's get a dedicating. So, what have I got for you today in this video? So, um, I have two projects which I'm working on. Uh, one of them is True Scale Space Marines. And the other one is um, casting my own bits and pieces and stuff like that. Um, which just so happens to be kind of like a knockoff um, project because of the True Scale Space Marines. Of which I will go into detail. So, let's uh, let's start showing you some gubbins, shall we? Now, right, gubbins, guys, here we are. So, uh, what do I have in front of you? Well, this is my squad, as it is, well, as it stands. Um, I'll quickly take you through what we've got here. Just trying to uh, get my tripod in the proper position here. So, to start off, we have my sergeant, the legs and both shoulder pads and the majority of the body of the uh, backpack there is um, the chapter house true scale space marines uh, kit that they came out with the power fist, the arm, the chest and the head the banner and the vents on the backpack are obviously plastic now oh the sweat now the plastic stuff is from the um, Sanguinary Guard kit purely because it's the only fucking thing I've got left. Uh, the shoulder pad itself, this uh, heresy pattern, is actually a bit of a custom made uh, heresy pattern. Even though there is one in the kit, uh, I wasn't too fond of that particular shoulder pad. So I filed down all the details, made, made just so that I had a plain shoulder pad and having got some rivets from um, the trains, uh, tiny trains company, something like that, um, proceeded to uh, decorate it myself. So yeah, that's that one I've run done with. I believe I did the same with this one, adding extra rivets. That's him. Oh, the spoon. In the eyes. Then we move on to this guy. There's uh, one thing you might notice about uh, the chapter house kit is all iconography is uh, removed. All well, the iconography that you would normally associate with a space marine. So aquilas, skulls, there's none of that. Um, you do get uh, rivets and a very, very nicely sculpted uh, pair of legs and uh, torso. Box standard, not a great deal to show off on that guy. Then you got his other battle brother, of which is almost a carbon copy apart from um, I've given him a, a skirt, which his helmet hangs from. And then you've got this uh, kind of row, which tapers off to nothing. And then I'm going to start having uh, some more gubbins hanging off there. And things like ammo pouches and stuff like that. And then we move on to this guy. Knelt down. I must say I do like this kit. Um, I would have liked to have got my hands on the Warsmith kit. Um, but unfortunately, when Worthy Painter highlighted this kit from uh, from Chapter House and Warsmith, um, 
so was Games Workshop, they were watching that video as well. And they must have pounced on um, Warsmith for the cease and desist because unfortunately he doesn't do them anymore. Then we'll move on to my favourite guy. This little chap has got quite a bit of narrative going on. He's been ordered by the uh, sergeant to uh, get comms up with HQ. So he's uh, got his little cable attached to his dish. And he's just trying to uh, radio in HQ to uh, I don't know, report him or to uh, report some uh, enemy position, that sort of stuff. And just real nice narrative game, that guy. I really do like him. Then we've got the special weapon chappy of the group. Running around with his uh, Maximus pattern helmet and uh, his melter gun. Reposition the legs. Quite, uh, quite severely. The way he sculpted knee pads in with green stuff and the line cloth. Quite proud of that guy. Oh. And then we move on to the heavy weapons dude. Now, back lot. Uh, I wanted to get them primed because uh, there were quite a few. Piece, bits and pieces that I'd cast myself, uh, heads um, and stuff like that, and, um, and shoulder pads. It was quite hard to see all the detail, so uh, I speedily spray painted them with my, uh, pardon me, with my Dragon Red from Army Painter, but unfortunately it's, uh, it's a bit old. A bit uh, worse for wear. We're running on low. Uh, the uh, primer didn't come out too well, so I'll probably clean them up a little bit with some alcohol and get me airbrush to them and give you another look at them once I've done some some work on them. But this is pretty much what they all look like green stuff and plastic. The heavy bolter, um, as you can tell, scratch belt. We've got the uh, weapon, the ammo magazine from the Devastator kit. The heavy bolter itself is in two parts. You've got uh, the front part and the back section. And just where the green stuff starts, and you get the hand part. That's actually from um, a Grey Knight weapon. Got some plastic out there to bulk it out. And uh, I must say, this guy is quite special. I really do like this guy. You get to see uh, some of the rivets that I use for the shoulder pads, these are these smaller variants. He's like uh, extra. One of the shoulder pads which I cast myself. And a line cloth. What's well, there? So, standing there looking at that is quite intimidating actually. That's pretty cool. Big ass fucking heavy bolter with some dude behind it. That's pretty cool. That's my unit at the moment in time. I do apologise for the wobble. I've got you on there. Uh, puff it. Um, little, uh, yeah, a puffy. Little foot red stool type thing to do there. Just whilst I'm at the, at the uh, conservatory table. Now I'm going to show you some of the other true scale stuff which I've been working on. Right. This dude. Let me push them back so you can get this full, full glory. 
This is the first Truth Girl Space Marine that I did. Obviously, I had these huge planes. I believe this is a 40mm square from uh, Voodoo Works. If anybody wants uh, a link to them, sh uh, leave a comment downstairs and I'll uh, see what I can do. But I've covered them before, so they're probably there's probably going to be a link in one of my older posts. So here we are. Like I said, iconography is very, very um, non-existent. We've only got um, the main shape of a space marine. So the shoulder pads and the chest, the knees and the greaves. All the important bits are there. And I've got my bloody little arms. And decorations. All the uh, sanguinary you regard these. Plume, head, the uh, helmet plume, and more industries. And uh, there you go, and that's that. This uh, Rhino door design, forge wall design, was cast in resin. I do apologise for the fucktard on a bike. Retard. Um, yeah, cast in resin, but um, one of the other products that I brought to your attention, Blue Stuff, cast resin perfectly as well, with very little degradation in the detail of the mould. Moving on to something a bit bigger and a bit more impressive. Be right back. Right, where was I? Here we are. And uh, on to bigger and better pieces. This is my 60mm uh, square diorama plane. And on it we have two quite uh, epic-looking space marines. Spin them around for you. As you can tell, quite a bit of green stuff used on the second guy. They're not glued down. Because obviously I want to paint the base separately. And bring them back. There we go. So, let's uh, have a butt to the shower. The uh, bolter with scrap is from the uh, salt and black reach. They're attached to box sanded pair of space marine arms, nothing special. The helmet is Space Wolf for um, to be honest I didn't see how the details on this were too Space Wolf. It's just a little bit of trim and it's about it really. But it does look fucking mean. Well, Moving on. Remove him. We have. Uh, seems to be a sergeant, a special character type dude. Big ass. Power halberd. A bit of green stuff. A uh, wrist mounted furnace pistol. Gubbins on the belt. A nice Petri seal there from the Furiosa Dreadnought, I believe. So, yeah. There you have it. That's uh, pretty much what I'm working on. Fanatically. I absolutely love. Oh, I absolutely love this uh, True Space Marine uh, kit. Once again, to reiterate myself, um, it's an absolute bummer that Space that, um, Games Workshop beat me to Warsmith. Uh, that guy would have got so much of my money, primarily because he's based in the UK.
Oh. Sorry about that, just needed a drink. So yeah, if um, anybody knows how or whether or not you can get hold of um, Warsmith's kit, uh, please, please PM me. Maybe we can uh, work something out. Or, uh, that's if you've got some. Or, uh, if you know how to get hold of some, please PM me. That guy's, uh, that, that kit looked so nice. So nice. Now, moving on to uh, project part two. And that is using a RTV silicon mould. Don't ask me what RTV stands for, I just know it's a fancy word that they always put in front of silicon and mould. So um, here we are. These are three of my moulds. This is one of my earliest. My actual first um, mould. I don't have it down here with me, but it was for this item. It's a uh, one uh, one sheen 30mm uh, base. Yeah, I believe it's 30mm. Uh, I put a few pieces of cork down, cast it. This one needs a bit of work, cleaning it up a bit. A bar, uh, that's a very nice platform for putting uh, pumice, skulls, other details down and then mounting your miniature on top. So it's... That's my first one. The second mould was actually this head one. Just give you a look inside the negative uh, cavity. Those are the backs of their heads. This is the front of their heads. So obviously primarily my aim is going to be towards Blood Angel stuff. So we've got this a bit tougher to have a look at. This is the head with the royal. <coughs> um, the ones I'm using on my uh, large diorama. Then we've got my most recent heads. We should have a look. Put the uh, excess to the top of the head. Now the reason I've gone about um, my second set of heads that way is because whenever I um, did a casting I always ended up with bubbles underneath the chin which um, obviously ruined the the entire face and ultimately caused them to be a miscast. Then we've got the uh, set of shoulder pads here for my large scale space marines of which here's a uh, set of them. I'm still having a little bit of trouble with air bubbles, but um, in time I can practice, with practice becomes perfection and you know, get better and better and better. Now, like I said, blue stuff is perfectly fine for casting in resin, still holds a hell of a lot of the detail. So there's some Blood Angel bits here. Now, if we have a butcher's in here, let's remove that one because it's been spray painted. Um, this is my little tray of castings. So we've got shoulder pads, uh, sanguineous. More sanguineous and lots of heads. Now you'll notice that there's three different colours. So let's pull some out. 
Now, the resin that we're going to be showing you uh, dries this colour, Hydra. This one's not a bad run, I must say the same myself. There is the one the air bubbles from. Then we have a grey. As you can see, big ass bubble on the chin. And then there's some black. Where is a really big air bubble in his face. But obviously I've kept this for show and tell purposes. <clears throat> now when it comes to colouring the resin, you can do so using normal pigments. Now, pigments aren't anything new in our hobby. We've been pushing them and showing them for quite a while. Uh, characters like myself, uh, Mane, Augustus Calgar, Templars Crusade, um, the list goes on. So, Pigments should be pretty much well known by people now. The normal hobbyist should have at least one pot of it, no matter what colour. Nine times out of ten, it'll probably be a concrete or a rust colour. So, there you go. You can quite simply add a little bit of it and off you go. Now, onto the products themselves. Let me tie you up after yourself. And where to get them from. So here we are. Let me open the camera a little bit. Okay then. This is um, Polycraft um, and RTV silicon mold making rubber. The company to get it from is Quantum Supplies, co.uk. Now, straight away, it's a UK company. That's what should be standing out at you. They're actually from Sheffield in Yorkshire, which is a pretty good position. They're uh, pretty centralised, you know, pretty central in the country. So shipping um, is quite quick. They, uh, it should get to you in pretty fast stead, fast speed. And one thing to mention is that they have, from their main website, a uh, free UK mainland shipping. So whatever you, you see, you pay and that's it. That's your PMP sorted. Because it's all in the price. Now they do have an eBay store. Um, there'll be several links down in the little link box, little doobly doobly do information box for the uh, video. Um, there'll probably be one for the rivets, there will be one for the Quantum Supplies main homepage, so you can have a look at them. And there will be one to that eBay page, one to each of the products I'm going to show you. So definitely uh, get a click in on those links and have a good look at some of this stuff. Right, um, features of said silicon. Right, this is the pot of catalyst. I've gone for a 1.1 kilogram uh, size um, weighting of the silicon. There's normally four, uh, starting at about 200 and odd grams up to 500 and odd grams up to 1.1 kilogram and I think the largest is 2.2 kilogram cost me about 40 odd quid so obviously I went for the 1.1 it's about 25 quid around that area um, I've hardly even touched this I'm like one third of the way through it already and I've got moulds which will last me a long time so uh, mix ratio 10 to 1 the working time on this stuff is about 40 to 60 minutes um, that's not necessarily that important when it comes to the silicon what is important is the demold time so that's when your uh, silicon is going to be dry from pouring it and you can take your mold 
your newly made mould out of its cast, out of its reservoir and start casting stuff yourself with that mould. So the dry time for this is, well the demold time is 12 to 24 hours. Now the way I have things set up for making my moulds is primarily I'll work all day um, making the bits and pieces I want to uh, I want to make a mould of, get them mounted onto uh, a lot of pieces of sprue and that sort of stuff and um, finding a suitable reservoir to place them into uh, make a mould of um, like I said I'll work all day get to about 8 9 o'clock at night um, that's when I will mix up my uh, my quantity of resin of um, silicon I mean now I don't go over uh, 100 ml a box standard mould like what I've just shown you is about 50 ml of rubber now I have these medicine cups that hold 30 mil, so roughly I'm doing two of these, 225 mil, 50 mil, laughing. And in a separate pot, I'll have five mil of catalyst. All that goes into um, another pot when I actually mix up the uh, the silicon itself. Make sure it's all fully um, mixed through, it's all the same colour. I can't see no catalyst, no raw catalyst. Um, and that's when I pour it. Now, um, I'll probably, I probably will be doing a uh, tutorial on uh, making moulds and casting your own stuff. It's just at the moment in time, what I've got left to make a mould of, um, I need some Lego, so I'm still trying to get my hands on some Lego. But as soon as I've got my Lego, you can, uh, well, Lego and plasticine, those are the two components needed. As soon as I've got them two, um, you can, without a doubt, see a tutorial go up. Or if I sculpt some new shoulder pads, something warranting making a mould, I'll uh, shoot up a tutorial for you. Now, there's a few hints and tips to actually pouring the silicon into the cavity where you've got um, your bits and pieces. So, but I'll cover that in the tutorial. Moving on. Now that you've got your silicon, you're going to be wanting something to... Uh... Oh, bear with me. Okay, I'm sorry about that guys, here we are. Um, resin. <clears throat> um, the make of this resin is Polycraft SG2000 Fastcast. Um, it is one of three that Quantum Supplies do. <clears throat> They've got their um, Polycraft SG2000. They've got the Easy Flow 60 Polyurethane, I believe. And I think it's Easy Flow 95 Fastcast. Um, both Easy Flows are quite expensive, hence I've not had a look at them. But um, I thought it was quite appropriate that I went with Polycraft for the silicon. I might as well go for Polycraft with the resin as well. And to say that it's Fastcast as well, um, that were pretty cool as well. So. A little bit of uh, information about said resin. <clears throat> it is a one-to-one -one mix ratio. So um, that's straightforward. And they say to do it by weight, but I do it by measurement. So theoretically speaking, um, <clears throat> there, there's not too much in, in the way of leeway there. Um, Two of the really important things to keep in mind is pot life and demold time. Pot life for this is at maximum about four minutes, if that, three and a half to four minutes. Demold time 
is 30 minutes to an hour now depending on how much you pour um, and how the conditions are within your room um, I have known it to uh, demold about 15 minutes very quick so keep an eye on your uh, on your moulds it does cure really quickly and um, you know if you're doing anything a little bit chunky um, try and leave it for the hour the full hour that way the plate safe um, that's about it really um, this is the 1.1 kilogram set um, about 25 quid so for the entire lot you're looking at 50 quid now it might sound a lot but if you think about it realistically uh, you're looking about two um, two Thunderwolf calories are more expensive uh, ten Blood Angel Death Company are not too far off I think 15 is more expensive by ten so it's not a great um, chunk out of your hobby expensive you know expenses but you've got to think about how much you're going to start saving because of it <coughs> um, you know getting certain bits um, that you want there and then it's pretty cool now other um, reasons for me bringing this to YouTube and that sort of stuff and your attention was um, primarily my Aeneas and Templar's Crusade um, seeing as at the moment in time they're doing their big crusades um, they're constantly on making a table it seems at the moment in time and it was actually one of Templar's Crusades videos I think it was one of his latest ones on his table he was um, he was building a sandbag wall he was doing all sandbag walls and the phrase he said was um, something along the lines of he's only got one plastic sprue of the sandbags and straight away it hit me um, if I had have brought this to YouTube a hell of a lot quicker he would have been able to clip off those plastic sandbags uh, mount them on a small frame make a mould of it and cast them himself and he have just been able to sit back there and cast as many as he wants and make as uh, many sandbag walls as he wants um, so that's one of the reasons why I've decided to bring it um, my niece is doing dragon's teeth or he was doing dragon's teeth which also got me thinking wow really nice simple piece of scenery that you can cast um, yeah I just wanted to bring it to to their attention now some of the other things I've, I've actually sat and thought about this and taken it a little bit further so let's say um, Templar's Crusade does pick up some silicon and some resin and he starts having to play around one of the things which he can possibly start doing is not so much casting individual sandbags but doing sandbag walls themselves then you know build up a basic um, I don't know a two tier a three tier of about five or six long so that's his basic structure of a sandbag wall from then he can start using green stuff, milliput, that sort of stuff uh, converting the sandbag walls, making one or two modifications, drilling holes <coughs> pardon me, drilling holes getting a bit of um, grey pumice from Vallejo having it coming down the side of the sandbag wall and then paint it up as sand that's falling out of the sandbag you could also do um, a sandbag that had been torn open and there was sand everywhere um, <coughs> pardon me 
So that got me thinking, like, well, that's pretty cool, I need to get this up on YouTube, so here we go guys, I hope Templar's Crusade and Marnaeus find this of some help and um, if anybody else finds this of some use, thumbs up, cannot wait and um, yeah guys, that's it from me for now. Um, I'll try and bring some more videos to you in the future, in the forthcoming future. So that's it guys from me, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe and I will see you in my next video. Keep safe, catch you later, bye bye.